Hey everybody, I'm Dan Fellows, and today we're going to be dialing in the amazing Slayer Espresso. So I'll be working on the single group model here, but the techniques we're going to use will also apply to the two and three group espresso models as well. So we're going to walk through the process step by step with the end goal of drinking those amazing Slayer shots that we've all been talking about. Today we'll be focusing on setting our needle valve, selecting our brew recipe, and adjusting our grind size to achieve the target total contact time. At the end of the video, I'll also share a starting recipe that I find works really well for a wide range of coffees. And before we start brewing, I want to give you some tips so that we can make sure we're drinking those amazing espressos as soon as possible. So I know we're all really excited to start brewing those shots, but before we do, I want to run through some preparatory steps that are going to make sure we're drinking those coffees really, really soon. So first of all, we want to make sure we've got plenty of coffee. I recommend a minimum of a kilo, which means that we can really taste a number of different espressos and really understand the differences between the shots without changing coffee. Second of all, we want to make sure if your machine isn't plumbed in, we've got plenty of high quality water and also plenty of room for waste so we don't have to keep topping these up or changing them. And then when it comes to installing the machine, we want to make sure that the steps on the website have been perfectly followed with the pump pressure set to 9 bar. Of course it's really important that the machine is super clean, so if it's ever been used before, I'd make sure you follow the steps to do a full back flush on the machine. And then finally, we want to set our brew temperature to 93 degrees. The final thing we need to do is really understand the coffee we're going to be brewing. So when you look at the bag of coffee, it'll give you lots of information that's going to be really useful and we're going to be using that to follow the step-by-step -step process for dialing in. So first we need to understand the roast profile and this is going to determine how we set our needle valve flow rate. So one of the key features that really distinguishes the Slayer Espresso from its peers is the needle valve. So the needle valve allows us to restrict the flow rate of water in the pre-brew phase of our extraction, giving us complete control over the flavors and the acidity, sweetness and bitterness we're able to extract. So we recommend a flow rate of between 40 and 60 grams of water delivered in 30 seconds in the pre-brew phase of our extraction. And we're gonna measure this using two things, the first being a cup and the second being a set of scales. So setting this is really easy. You simply remove the cup tray, Grab our cup, set it down on our scale and make sure that's tabbed to zero. And with our flow rate, we're going to start by basing this on the roast profile of the coffee. So if we have a very light roast, I'm going to be aiming towards 40 grams of water delivered in 30 seconds. And if we have a very dark roast, I'll be moving towards 60 grams of water measured in that 30 seconds. This particular coffee is around about a medium roast, so I'm going to be working to 50 grams of water per 30 seconds but you can deviate maybe five mil either side of this dependent on the roast profile of your coffee. And I really encourage people to play around with this because you'll really extract different flavors and also taste sensations in doing so. So the first thing we want to do is quickly purge for 10 seconds. And when we talk about the actuator, we have three distinct positions. So the position that it's currently in, on the right, is off. In the first position, in the middle, this is our pre-brew with the restricted flow rate. And then when we move to the left position, position two, this is our full brew. So I'm going to be measuring this on the scales for 30 seconds using the timer at the back of the machine on the dashboard. And we're going to measure how much water is delivered. So currently we've got 53.7 grams, so just a little bit over. And what I want to do is just slightly restrict this flow rate by turning the needle valve clockwise to reduce the flow rate and bring it down to around about 50. So we'll keep repeating this process, turn the needle valve either clockwise to decrease the flow rate or counterclockwise to increase the flow rate until we get the exact amount of water we want to be delivered in 30 seconds. 
So now we're ready to choose our recipe. And when we come to finding a starting recipe, this is actually really simple. We always recommend using the baskets that come with the Slayer Espresso machine with a dose of between 18 and 20 grams. So today I'm gonna to be working with 19. Now we've got our dose, we need to work out our yield that we're gonna start with. And I tend to start with a one to two ratio of dose to yield. So dose is the ground coffee that goes in the basket and then yield is the weight of the liquid that is in the espresso cup at the end of the extraction. So with 19 grams of coffee going into the basket, double this, we want a 38 gram yield in the cup. We're gonna adjust this as we go through the dial-in process, but to begin with, we're gonna start with our 19 gram dose and a 38 gram yield. So the first thing to do is grind our coffee. When it comes to our basket, of course it wants to be really dry and clean. Make sure we purge our group. And then it's really important, we weigh our dose to within 0.1 of a gram throughout the dial-in process. We're gonna make sure the coffee's well distributed and evenly tamped. And then before we start brewing, Take your espresso cup, pop it on your scales, reading zero. And final purge. Dry the drip tray with a separate cloth. Then we're ready to extract. So for the Slayer shot that we're really looking for, we wanna use position one, our pre-brew phase, to gently saturate the puck. And I'm gonna use the shot mirror in the back of the drip tray to see when the group basket really fills up. And as soon as that's fully saturated, move into our full brew position, position two. We can use our shot mirror to keep an eye on the shot. Really looks amazing. I'm gonna be obviously timing our pre-brew and our full brew phase using the dashboard at the back of the drip tray. So as soon as we get to just before 38 grams, I've stopped the shot. And now we can see our pre-brew time was 22.4 seconds and our full brew time 44.4. So now we have this information, we need to add our pre-brew time and our full brew time together to work out our total contact time. So now we've pulled our first shot and we've got an understanding of the pre-brew and the full brew time. We need to adjust our grind size to ensure that we get a total contact time of between 45 and 55 seconds as a starting point. So if your shot ran too slowly and it exceeded 55 seconds, we need to grind coarser. And if it ran very quickly and was under 45 seconds, we need to grind finer. So you need to repeat this process until we're within our window of 45 to 55 seconds total contact time. So now we've set our grind size to deliver a total contact time of between 45 and 55 seconds. We need to taste our shot and assess the body first of all. <laughs> That's so good. So this shot actually has a really great body, really silky, kind of medium in weight, really, really delicious espresso. But if this shot was actually, for example, a little bit too light, maybe a little bit too delicate in terms of body, what we could do is adjust our yield to increase the body. So by pulling a shorter shot and decreasing our yield to maybe 36 or 34 grams, we'd increase the body, get slightly more heaviness coming through, maybe more of a jammy texture. On the other hand, if it was really heavy as it is, and you wanted to create a little bit more of a light shot, a little bit less heavy, you could actually extend your yield, maybe up to 40 grams or 42 grams to bring through the more juicy characteristics of the shot. So once you've finalized your yield, the next thing you need to do is rebrew the shot and assess the balance. So the next step we're going to take is to rebrew the shot and assess the balance and really fine tune this. So we want our shots to be really sweet without too much acidity or bitterness. And now we need to rebrew the shots using all of these parameters 
to fine tune our total contact time in order to get the perfectly balanced espresso. So this shot has been pulled to those parameters and the next thing we need to assess is the balance of the shot, which is the acidity, sweetness and bitterness and how well they work together. So this particular shot had a 24 second pre-brew phase and a 26 second full brew time. So a total contact time of 50 seconds. And I wanna think about the balance of acidity, sweetness and bitterness when I try this shot. So this is actually really sweet. Some acidity, which kind of balances out the sweetness. Not really any bitterness in there at all. It's super sweet. But if this shot was a little bit too bright, a little bit too acidic, what we could do is adjust our grind once more to change our total contact time. So if it were too acidic, we might want to go slightly finer to increase our total contact time from maybe 50 seconds to 55 to slightly reduce the acidity and increase the sweetness. On the other hand, if we were getting any bitterness in there that wasn't pleasant, you could actually grind a little bit coarser, speed up our shot, get a slightly shorter total contact time, maybe closer to 45 seconds, and then we'd be getting really nicely balanced shots. So now we've had a chance to dial in the coffee together, I wanted to share with you my starting recipe that I use and find works with a very wide range of different coffees. So once I've achieved this, I'll then work through and fine tune my espresso to really get it to the highest level I possibly can. So I'll start with a 93 degree brew temperature. I'll use the needle valve to set my pre-brew flow rate to 50 grams of water per 30 seconds. And I'll use a 19 gram dose for a 38 gram yield. I'll aim for a 50 second total contact time it's usually made up around about 25 seconds of pre-brew and 25 seconds of full brew. And once I've achieved this, I'll work through the process, really fine tune and trying to elevate that espresso using the techniques that we've worked on today. So the final thing to say is that the Slayer Espresso Machine gives you so much control over your espressos that this is a really useful guide, I hope, which will help you navigate this. But it is only a guide. These aren't rules, they're not hard and fast, and it's up to you to experiment and find out what works best for you and the coffee that you love to drink. So I hope you have fun experimenting and I look forward to seeing you again soon.